What were you doing here? Just meeting somebody. And who are you here to meet tonight? She said she'd be at 15 going, but I didn't know if it was true or what. So you knew that going in? Well, I don't know for sure. Was there any other reason to suggest that she wasn't? No. What's good, YouTube? Welcome back to Graham. Do you notice that little bit of extra energy in my voice today? That's right. I have officially conquered my sickness. <laughs> <laughs> I know it took a long time, so I apologize for that, but make sure you watch this one until the very end because we're getting back into the full swing of things with this going through the classic TCAP episodes thing, and this guy is definitely one you're going to want to see because he actually has the worst interview with Chris Hansen. Usually these guys give up a lot of details that, you know, further help them uh, or help the prosecutors in their case, I should say, and this dude is so terrible about lying that he pretty much spills the beans on every single aspect of him coming over to meet this decoy. So make sure you watch that with me. It's quite an insane episode. But without any further ado, let's just get right on into it. Come on in. It's about to get busy at our undercover house in Flagler Beach, Florida. How are you? It's cold outside. Okay, first things first, it is so creepy how big these dudes smile when they see the decoy and they realize for a second that, hey, this might not be a sting. This might actually be the person I thought I was speaking to. That is just vile and disgusting how happy they are in this exact moment. But yeah, this is Brian, who is the target of today's video. But yeah, let's watch Brian's life very rapidly fall apart as he ventures further and further into this house and into this situation as a whole. Online, Dory uses the screen name Bryman31282. He was chatting with a decoy, calling herself Allie, who told him she was a old girl. So that's right. This dude thinks he's meeting up with someone named Allie. And in the chats, they actually go over the fact that he admits to having met up with people like this in the past and doing this thing multiple times in the past. So I'm sure he's going to try to pull the same, oh, this is my first time ever doing this, you know, stick that all these guys have. But now they actually have proof that this is definitely not the first time he's done it because he himself admitted that. I circled oh. around again. <laughs> Here he is in our house. Well, did you bring anything? Yeah. What'd you think? Got my clothes or... The decoy he's meeting is really a 19-year-old actress hired by Dateline. So boom, right out of the freaking gate, the decoy gets him to admit what he brought, which is a tactic that they use to, you know, basically add more evidence to the case. If they admit that they brought these items that are clearly only in their possession for one intention, you know, in their pocket, I should say. I, I can't really say what the item is called, but you know what it's called. If they brought those, they clearly were coming over to this place to do something with this decoy. Despite how much they might deny it as soon as Chris Hansen steps out, which the time is now for that. Let's watch the reveal. Let me go change and I'll be right back. Okay. Can we go get my stuff real quick? Oh. Why don't you have a seat right over there for me, please? Yeah. What were you doing here? Just meeting somebody. And who are you here to meet tonight? Oh my God. If you didn't believe me that this guy was an idiot, here's your first freaking piece of evidence. Chris asked this absolute weirdo how old this person was that he was supposed to be meeting. And he doesn't even think to lie about the answer like most of these other guys. Uh, Somebody talking on the computer. What's her name? Allie. And how old is Allie? She said she'd be 15 going, but I didn't know if it was true or what. He like starts talking and then realizes too late that he opened his mouth way too quickly without thinking. And he was like, she's 15 going on. Oh wait, no, if she's going on 16. That's still not old enough. Uh, she never told me her age, I don't think, even though I did just say 15. That's just my favorite number. So I thought of it. What did she tell you online? She didn't really say her age. What age was on the profile? So when you looked at the profile, you saw that she's years old. Yes. And then Chris asked him more and he's like, well, actually she didn't say her age, even though I'd said 15. Okay, she's 14, fine. Yeah, it literally said on the profile, 14. Anyways, next question. <laughs> like, dude, this isn't a test that you can fail, all right? You gotta have better answers than this if you're just gonna try to lie your way out of this like most of these guys do. But maybe he's taking the honest route and thinks that will help him in the long run. Either way, you're kind of screwed in this position. So whether or not you tell the truth, it's gonna be awkward and you're gonna be exposed for the same thing. So you're pretty much screwed. Dory says he almost changed his mind about coming, but amidst during his hour-long drive from Orlando, he made a point of stopping for some supplies. And it is absolutely freaking disgusting how far these people travel in order to meet up with these decoys. This dude had an hour to decide whether or not he was going to do this. An hour long drive for something. I don't think the last time I drove an hour for something, it was not something that I needed to do. You know what I mean? Like going to see family or something. I'm not really going out of my way to drive an hour if I don't have to. So this dude really wanted to go over to this house, obviously, if he's willing to take up that much driving time just to go over there. It's not like he was skipping 
sweeping across town. This dude went across multiple counties to meet this person. So that is clear intent right there. I, think I just topped the food line. And what all did you get at food line? I got Mountain Dew and a box of Mountain Dew and a box of what did y'all talk about, Brian? And the dude pulls up with some freaking items that I cannot name once again, but you know what they are, and Mountain Dew. If that is not a winning combo of a total loser, I don't know what is. This dude was trying to get his gamer fuel on and then also get his, uh, you know, that on as well. <laughs> this freaking grease ball is just so predictable, dude. I know he's like 24 and a lot of people might think, oh, that's still pretty young. This guy's just a young, dumb kid, but no, that's a fully grown adult. He's a weirdo. And what a weird combo to go buy at the store. The person at the storefront went when they saw you buying those two things together, must know that you are just an absolute loser. What did y'all talk about, Brian, when you were online with this girl? Talked about me, and we did talk about a little yes. That may be an understatement. So he must really be going for this honesty thing because he admits that the bulk of what they were talking about on the internet was, you know, inappropriate to say the least. And then Chris still takes that answer and is okay with it, but he needs to, you know, not let this guy speak so lightly of the situation and be like, yeah, we talked about it a bit. He then goes on to read the transcripts where we are shown that he clearly was talking about this pretty much exclusively with his decoy and they didn't talk about anything else. It shows this dude had one thing on his mind and one thing only. Do you think it's appropriate for somebody your age no, to come visit a f home alone. No, I do not. But she is the one that invited me. Does that make it right? That does not make it right. And I love this excuse. I've heard a couple of these idiots use this before. She invited me, dude. I was the one that was asked to come over and it, it's like not nice to have your friend invite you over and you don't go to their house. It shows that you're a bad friend. So I was just trying to be a good friend to my online buddy that I met that I've been chatting to, okay? I didn't know their age. I thought they were 15 going on. Uh, you, they didn't tell me their age, okay? Like this dude's lies he can't even keep up with. He's that stupid. He's just bouncing from idea to idea and hoping one sticks. Does that make it right? That does not make it right, no. Have you ever done this before? No, I, I did lie about that. Yeah, I know what you're fixing to say. I lied. You say right here. I know. I have met two on the net. One young like you. And now he immediately tries to cover up for what he said in the chat about meeting up with people in a similar fashion twice before in the past, which is so stupid that he would allow himself to type that out just to flex it. Like, obviously, if this is a sting, that's just going to add further issues to your case. And thankfully, it was a sting and it is going to add further issues to his case. But he is a certified bozo for saying that. I lied. You say right here. I know. I have met two on the net. One young like you. Yeah, I know. I lied about all that. Have you ever seen our show called To Catch a Predator? And wow, okay, so I'm gonna pause again real quick. That was a very quick transition to the final reveal. Apparently, Chris had all the evidence that he needs, and this guy kind of speed ran this one. I mean, this was a quick interview, but when you're this forthcoming with information and so easily ready to snitch on yourself, it's just that easy for Chris. And he's like, okay, my job's over with. I get to go to an early dinner tonight. Hell yeah. <laughs> I'm sure some of these interviews take forever, but this one was literally like five minutes in and out. So let's see this dude realize that his whole world is about to be changed forever as a result of his actions, AKA the best part of the show. Let's get it. I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC and we're doing a story. Dory heads for the door. Outside, he meets the Flagler Beach police. So that's right. He tried to make a quick dash out of the door, which I don't see many of these guys try to do. I know they cover their heads usually, but this dude literally was like, I'm going to run out to my car and beat anyone that's trying to get to me. You know what I mean? But nope. the cops were waiting, of course, and they get him down onto the ground and take him over to processing where he is fully aware that his life is about to change for the worse as a result of driving an hour to meet up with this decoy that he thought was a certain age and definitely was not, thankfully. They take him around to the back of the house because the next visitor is about to arrive. But the cops have everything under control as that second man, William Roach, a Taekwondo instructor, approaches. And if you didn't think this world is absolutely sick, you know, in, in my idea of this show, I thought they were maybe catching one guy every couple months with this sting. I figured it would be a lot of work, but now they're showing that it's literally a rotation. They were like, okay, we had to lock him up quickly and bring him to the backyard so that the next target, who was our 830 appointment, <laughs> didn't get any, you know, distracted by any of this and see what was going on. And we could catch 
catch the next guy rapidly after that. Like, are they just meeting up with like four different dudes in a day? Is that literally how many down bad creeps there are out there in the world? Ugh, this show actually makes me lose some more faith in humanity if that was even possible. But truly, that is mind blowing that they just have a rotational basis that they're catching these guys on. Oh, and that is hilarious. So the next guy parks right in front of the dude's car, not realizing that both of them are going to have their trucks towed as they are towed away to the station to be questioned by the ops. So it sounds like this dude did face a little bit of time, only two years. And then he also has a lifetime registry, which is good. But again, that is just not enough time. And I don't know if they can get sufficient evidence for this or if those chat logs stating that he's done this multiple times before weren't enough. But I feel like there should be more time here. But I don't know. Let me know what you guys thought of this down in the comments below. And if you agree, this is one of the dumbest creeps that have been caught in this show so far, because this dude was pretty forthcoming with just about every piece of evidence and detail that the cops and Chris Hansen need in this investigation. So props to him for making their job easy as well as mine. And thank you for the legendary episode, Chris, once again. But either way, thanks so much for watching until the very end. And a little side note, I have heard that there is a new season of 90 Day Fiance with Ed. I know there was a little bit of a mixed reaction with the way that he's been recently. But if you guys want to see me cover that, let me know down in the comments below. I think I would cover it from the angle of like, screw Ed, I'm not on Team Ed at all. So that way it would be not as bad. But let me know. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. Until next time, peace out.